Good morning. Good morning. A committee on parole is called to order. The time is 8.34 uh, a.m. Uh, we are, uh, our first location is going to be Bayou, Bayou, Bayou Correctional Center. Um, today is today is Thursday, February the 9th, 2023. Members of the panel today, to my left, Oh, and, oh, I'm sorry. Tony Maravella. Okay, all right. Alvin Roche. And Pearl Wise, I will be chairing today. Uh, support staff located at DOC headquarters in Baton Rouge are Whitney Tosler, Cheryl Anderson, Carla Williams, Sergeant Anderson. Uh, well, all right, we're ready for our first case, and we are at Bayou Correctional Center. Uh, we are the uh, staff at Bayou. Please identify yourselves. My name is Sandy Gale, and I'm the booking officer. Thank you, Ms. Sam. Is anyone else uh, there with you? No, ma'am. Just me and uh, Mr. Owens. Uh, Ms. Sandy, uh, at, at the appropriate time, we're going to be asking you about his disciplinary and what he has been doing lately. So I hope someone will be prepared to give us some kind of update as, as to how he's been doing. Uh, yes, especially, ma yes, ma'am, at the appropriate time. Thank you. Uh, so, sir, would you give us your name and your DOC number, please? Damien Owens, 566770. All right, Ms. Owens. Uh, and again, you've heard my name is Pearl Wise, and uh, you are our first case here today. Uh, let me explain the process to you. I'm going to read some information to the record, um, and then we'll conduct a parole interview with you. Your case has been assigned to, uh, to, Ms., to Mr. Maravella, and so he'll be interviewing you first. Uh, after all the, all the questions, I see you got some guests. Uh, let me call them. You got some supporters here this morning. Yes, right. I cannot always pronounce the first name. I'm going to go with the last name. I mean, y'all would just kind of wave. I know who I'm talking to. Uh, uh, Miss Mary Walls. She's not with an interview. Oh, oh, gotcha. Okay. Uh, Miss Cynthia. Okay. Uh, you're, his, you're his mother. Got you his mother. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. Miss Walls is his mother in law. Uh, his girlfriend, Miss Walls. Okay. Um, Damian Tillman, his son, okay, and the other Zion. Zion Walls, another son. All right. Thank y'all for coming today. It's very important that y'all are invested uh, in his success. All right. Let me read the information. I'm going to get you to open up here. I'm going to read this information in the record and then interviewed by Mr. Maribel. And we ask that you all answer his questions. Uh, your name is Damian Walls. Uh, Damian Eltron Walls. Owen, I mean Owens. I'm sorry, Walls. Oh. Um, and I see Owens sitting here. The OC number is five six six seven seven zero. You're listed as a fifth offender. Your current offense is simple burglary of inhabited dwelling and habitual. And you are a habitual offender. You were sentenced originally on October the twenty fourth of twenty eighteen. Then you were re-sentenced on July 15th of 2022. Uh, your original sentence was 10 years hard labor with the re-entry program. And then you were re-sentenced on 7-15-22 to 10 years hard labor. Uh, your parole date is listed as 7-15-2022. Uh, uh, you do not earn good time. And your full term date is February the 16th of 2028. Does that sound correct? Yes, ma'am. Right. Answer, Mr. Maribel. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. Mr. Owens, my name is Tony Maribel. I'll be the one starting out the questioning, okay? Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Uh, how old are you, Mr. Owens? I'm 41 years old. And how long have you been in prison this time? Um, 62 months. Tell me a little bit about your educational background. Um, I, got, I have a, a high school diploma and a GED. Um, I attended um, the University of Texas in Austin on an academic scholarship after I was uh, released from juvenile. Um, since I've been, I, I, I wanted to be a nurse, but I fell out of school maybe I was 19. 20. But since then, I've been um, pursuing welding and plumbing since I've been incarcerated through uh, NCCR. 
tell me what happened in, in, in school. You had an academic scholarship. What happened? How did you end up getting out of school? Um, young, um, I went to juvenile when I was 14 years old, and I stayed in juvenile until I was 19. And in the process of me being in juvenile in, in um, San Antonio, Texas, I ended up getting a scholarship. And when I got out, I was 19, bullheaded, young. Didn't want to go to school. Didn't listen to my mom and that man sitting right there in front of you. And uh, that was one of the biggest mistakes of my life, not finishing school, not finishing college. Uh, back then, were drugs an issue? Back then, so it was more on the lines of just, I want to be grown. Drugs wasn't an issue at that point, but they came, they came with it. But the issue with school, it was more so on the lines of, just being young and stupid at the time, you know. When did you start using drugs? Um, maybe 20, 21 years old, up in that age range. What were you starting to use? Like everybody else, I started with the marijuana, and then it it led on to uh, ecstasy and cocaine eventually. How often were you using ecstasy <clears throat> and cocaine? When I was home, when I was free, that was an everyday thing. Yeah. Every day, every day, multiple times a day, uh, I was a heavy drug user throughout my life. Did you ever get any treatment on the outside? No, sir. No, I, I, I never. I never felt like I needed any treatment on the outside. I never. I never really cared about it. I never. I thought that I could do it by myself. So no, I never got any kind of treatment. Let's talk about when you got out, uh, when you got sentenced in uh, October of uh, 2018. Okay. Uh, what was, it? tell me about the, the burglary. Um, a drug induced high on um, my cousin, matter of fact, my, uh, my, my victim is one of my cousins. His name is Raymond Bickham. Uh, me and him had a dispute. We had an argument and uh, over drugs. And I, uh, being high, I felt like he owed me. I felt I, I I felt entitled to what he had since he didn't pay me, and I broke into his home, and uh, I broke in there, and I stole, petted, TV, clothes, and uh, came to jail for it. And you were put into the reentry program, is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, I was put into and, the reentry program. Who was your judge? Uh, my first judge was Judge Knight. Hey. And Judge Knight put you into his reentry program. Yes, sir. And you went to prison. Did you get out on the reentry program? No, sir. Actually, what happened? It was a blessing and a curse uh, with the reentry program. A blessing and a curse. Now, the blessing of it was, I realized that Angola and penitentiary wasn't a place for me. wasn't a place that I wanted to be. And um, studies have shown before. I read somewhere. I don't remember the exact. It was one of my classes. Maybe thinking for a change. It said that out of all the prisons in Louisiana, that the recidivism rate in Angola is less than any of them. And I didn't understand that at the time. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't grasp the concept of why this place. And me being bullheaded, I always thought, because everybody got a life sentence, because they're gonna die. But actually, once you get out of Angola, once you once you actually leave from those gates and you realize you take everything for granted at that point, nothing is nothing. Nothing is a given. Everything is appreciated from the from, from being there with your family, from breathing to walking down the street. And so the reentry program, like I said before, I've been in and out of system since I was 14 years old. So sitting in classes and doing that, I was trained to do that. I was, I was, I was a poster child for that. I know the steps in the classes and I know all of that stuff. I knew it. And so I felt like when I went to the program, this was just another, another easy way out, another way I could just come home real quick, go in here and do it. But the one thing that I found out that those guys out there, they 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 can weed you out. They know. They know when you're for real and they know when you're fake. Excuse me, sir. Why did you get weeded out? I got weeded out because I was being manipulative. Um saying one thing. Doing something else, and the mental is coming. Don't you think that's the trade of a drug addict? Yes, yes, sir. That's that's definitely the trade of a drug addict. That's definitely what, that's that. Excuse me. So what happened then? After you got weeded out, what happened? You went back oh, to judge? Right? No, sir. Not not at that time. It was January twenty eighth, and I didn't I didn't go exactly to judge night. 
I won't, I got sent to general population in Louisiana State Penitentiary, Walnut 2, um, currently known as the Wild Side. And, mm -hmm. and I stayed over there for 16 months. And in those 16 months, that's when I really got the re-entry and goal experience. That's when I really realized that this wasn't the life of me. That's when that's when I started them classes that I that I just been sitting in and memorizing. That's when it was that's when those that's when them, them lessons had really came back. That's when you really think for a change. That's when you really celebrate your recovery. That's really when you realize that being the inside dad and the outside dad. That's when the anger management really came in. So, like I said, it was a it was a curse that I that I ended up going into general population in Angola. But the blessing was I came out a changed man. I'm no longer that Damien that's on that paper right there. So tell me how this change happened. I realize that this I don't see that you've taken very many programs since you got kicked out of the reentry program. Yes, sir. Um, I took I took um thinking for a change in July of 2020. And the rest of the jails that I've been in, I when I was in Allen, I ended up taking piping, rigging. And pipe fitting, doing an NCCR, but due to the fact that I was already in the reentry program, you take 100 hours pre-release, MRT, anger management, parents and celebrate recovery. When you take those classes, your name is, your name go automatically off the list when you go into another system. So even though I wasn't in any more classes, it was because I had already taken those classes. Not because I understand. I, I understand that you had already taken the classes. But after you took the classes, you got into all of this trouble. I mean, yes, you've got how many fight ups you had in 2021? Zero. 2021, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten write ups. You don't have any write ups, you say? I'm looking at your record. Aren't you Damien Owens? You got a write up for intoxication. You got a write up for contraband. You got a write two write ups for disobedience. Three write ups for disobedience. One for aggravated disobedience. One for a aggravated work offense. Another one for intoxication, and another one for defiance. You know that's not you. Yes, sir. I'm. You know what? When we're in the process of us talking, you did say 2021. I'm. I'm still like. I know what I'm saying. Yes, sir. I, I agree with that. Those right up my, my point is very simple. You tell me you took all of these classes because you 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 really know all about academics, and you, you, apparently you're a pretty intelligent man. You got a scholarship, all of those things. You took a lot of classes that apparently didn't sink in. Then when you get kicked out of Reentry, all of a sudden it starts sinking in. And you tell me in 2020, everything changed. Yet you've got 10, 11, 12 write ups since then. So justify that to me. There's no justification, sir. But change is continual, change, change happens. And the bottom I believe line. Moving in the right direction. Yes, sir. The, 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 the right direction. Yes, sir. But the problem was the the, 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 problem the problem is. No, the long and short of it all. Now I realize what I'm doing. Now it makes sense from what I'm doing. Even if so, so and let me stop you for a second. I just want to tell you a little bit about me. Yes, sir. I've been in the criminal justice system for 50 years. I was a prosecutor, I was a defense lawyer, I was a judge, I ran a drug court for 14 years. You are the typical drug court participant. Manipulative, got an answer for everything. Once you accept that and admit that, you can move forward. You're trying to manipulate me. I'm not gonna be manipulated. I see your record. When you got kicked out of reentry, you haven't taken very many programs since then. You've had a ton of write-ups. So why should I take a chance and let you out now when I'm not convinced at all you get it? Give me that answer. And don't tell me trust you. No, sir. Because I, I, I need to see 
evidence. Tell me why I should trust you. So you should trust me because this time I'm older. I'm ready. Like it's it's it's, it's no 41 years old. Don't tell me that's old. No, I'm older. I'm older. I'm not saying I, I'm saying I'm saying. It's, 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 it's this this part, this life had to come to a close. You know, like it all did. And I realized that like I'm a dolphin and I understand that I'm going to get help. I got classes when I come home. I'm ready for all of that. But at the same time, it's like the change is continuing. The chains keep coming. It don't just stop. And if you wanted, and if you wanted a clear cut answer, is Damien, have you changed right now? And my answer would have to be honest and say, I'm continuing to change. I'm continuing. Sure. I'm continuing. I accept that. I accept that. Well, let, let me just tell you a couple of things, okay? By our risk assessment, you are a high risk for recidivism. High. We don't see that very often. We often see moderate, but almost everybody would. You're a high risk. You have moderate needs, very high on the substance abuse scale. Yes, sir. You're a drug addict. So tell me what your sobriety plan would be if you were to get out. Um, I'm going to go to um, IOP, Intense Outpatient Therapy at the Florida Parish Human Service Authority in Bogalusa. Um, I spoke with Miss Carol. I can come in between Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. What are the triggers? Being broke, angry, um, rejection, my my surroundings. How are you gonna anger. handle your anger? Excuse me, sir. How are you gonna handle your anger? But the same place by going to anger management, by using my high power. What anger management have you taken so far? You need I took case of rage back in, in 2000. Excuse me, sir? When did you take it? Um, all these classes I took between March of 2019 to July of 2019. All right. And since then, you've got fighting, disobedience write-ups, defiance write-ups. That doesn't show me that you're in control of your anger. No, sir. Like I just said, the, the change is continuing, and I realize that I do need help with it. That's the reason why that I take it. I'm going going to In order for me to vote to let you out, I've got to be convinced you change. Not changing, change. Follow what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Now, Tell me about your substance abuse issues. What have you had any long-term substance abuse treatment while you've been in prison? Have you been to Steve Hoyle? Have you been to any long-term drug rehabs in while you've been in prison? No, sir. I, um, the places that I've been, none of them offered it. But I do go to NNA counseling when it's available. What was reentry? Reentry didn't have any any substance abuse component to it at all. Yes, sir. They had to celebrate. Well, with do it? That's I, what you decided you didn't need. Right? At that time, you're right. And that wasn't long ago. That was, that was three years ago. Well, you haven't taken any substance abuse since then. Any place I've been that offered it, I have taken it. I, well, what did you take? Only thing that they offered was an NNA classes on. I'm not saying that it wasn't offered to you. I'm saying you didn't take. It. Yes, sir. I have. I'm, I'm I'm sorry that it wasn't available to you, but you chose to get out of one of the best programs the Department of Corrections has, the reentry program. And Judge Knight is the architect of that program. You had all of the advantages and didn't take advantage of. It. And I think it's because you're a drug addict. You're not a bad guy. You've got a disease. You're a drug addict. Yes, and sir. a drug addict is manipulative. You convince yourself you can do anything. But you're not going to convince me by manipulating me. I have to see evidence. The evidence I see is you continue to get intoxicated, fight, disobey, defy. I haven't seen the change.
You've got support here, and that's wonderful. But they can't do it for you. You're the one that has to accept it. I'm not convinced. I don't think. I'm going to wait and listen to everybody else that has to talk. But I'm not convinced that you will. We have someone, uh, Madam Chairman, there that can tell us a little bit about that. Yes, sir. Um, Ms. Sandra, uh, what can you tell us about how this uh, young man has been doing of late? Uh, we received Damon in July, on July 20th of 2022. Uh, with uh, an out-of-state detainer, which has since been removed from his record. Okay. He has only had one write-up since he has been here, and that was in November on November 7th of 2022 for fighting. No, ma'am. That write-up was dismissed because I never, oh. that was, I was found wrong for I never went to court okay. on that, ma'am. <laughs> Sorry. Miss <laughs> Miss Miss Lawrence. Yes, sir. Oh. Please do not interrupt anyone when they give in their statement. You understand? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, he was written up on 11 7 of 2022 for fighting in the dorm. And according to what I see on this write up, he pled guilty. He was found guilty and he was given 10 days disciplinary segregation on 11 11 of 22. And the gentleman that he was fighting with got the exact same punishment. So they both pled guilty. Thank you, ma'am. That's all I've got. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Uh, Ms. Ms. Wise, Mr. Barabella has covered everything I want to cover. Very good, very good. And, and I, I forgot to tell you, um, Mr. Owens, after all the testimony has been received, you and I will have an opportunity to make a statement before we vote. Yes, ma'am. So at this time, uh, with no other questions, we, uh, three of your family members can speak. Uh, Ms. Cynthia, would you please come to the podium? Tell us who you are and your relationship to Mr. Owens and what you would like for us to know. And you do have three minutes. My name is Cynthia, and I'm Daniel. Yes. As he said, that he's been juvenile since uh, 14. I've been, at one time, I was a single parent and raising him. Sent him to the, some of the best in school and was there for him. And during the time of him being incarcerated, I always would just, you know, want my son to get out of jail, get out of jail, get out of jail. When he went to jail um, in 18, there was an officer that came to my house. It was Anthony Jones, a Bogalusa police department that came to my house looking for me. And I told the officer, if you give me your card, I will get him here. And yes, he was on drugs running from here to there. <clears throat> But my mother called the police on my brother, and he did 20 years in jail. So I said that if it, my mother could do it, I could do it too. I'd rather see him locked up than running from the jailhouse. And as I said before, I always wanted my boy, Lord, let them get out of jail. You know, let him get out of jail. My prayer now, and after, when I call him in, on, in 18, and he's been locked down on this now. My prayer now is that he be a changed man. Not that he just get out because I live in Bogalusa, so I see it all the time that you pray for him to get out and they come home, get on bad drugs and not used to the drugs, <clears throat> drugs that's on the streets. And they, you know, they died out of jail two days. So on this year, my prayer is that he be a changed man. And I'm not coming to you, asking you to let him out just because I'm that mother saying that. I feel in my heart because I would not be here. Because at last I said, I'm the one that called the police to get him locked up. I would not be here asking to give him a chance. Because, yes, he has a set of 16, that would be 17 in a few months. 
he had a, a relationship with a young lady that we, we went to church. He went to church with in Monaco when we lived there. So he's been knowing, he's been knowing her. I'm coming and acting as a mother to give him a chance. I believe if in my heart, like I said, if I wouldn't, I would be praying and I'd rather see him in jail than out on the streets dead. <clears throat> So when we come in with false and not believing that he's changed, in my heart, I feel that he's changed. If not, I would not act. And yes, he is my only son. I'm 63. I want to enjoy him. I'm retired. But I have to basketball, this and that. And I have COPD. But I, I believe in all my heart that my son has changed. Yes, and when you sit up to talk and listen at them, but when they're being manipulated and dealing with drugs at all times, even when they talk straight, wrap it up, ma'am. Okay, up. even when they talk straight, you feel the God, you have to look at them again. But I'm as his mother, and as I just said, that yes, I feel within my heart because if not, I'd rather see him sit there and live than to be out on the streets and be. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Miss Walls, girlfriend. And she went over her three minutes. I'm sorry. That's okay. I can assure you. <laughs> but I'm done with school today. I'm coming before you because he gets out. Damien has a job, okay? You like to see the letter? Oh, no. Um, no, it's with, with who? Who's the job with? It is with nothing but the smoke out of Boba Lusa. Yes, and the person that done getting the job is also a pastor of the church. He got some other boots and facts and everything to him as well. Where's um, he going to be going to his counseling for his substance abuse and everything else? It's okay, then, but he's up um, on the Austin Street. And he also has, he does have a school that he's taking. It's also an ECWR, NCCER. They're all there. If, you know, they put him in there for that video, they're not in there. I can just put him in there. But I'm um, also on um, his email say, I've known Daniel since he was in the fifth grade. Um, no, he hasn't always been the model citizen. But um, took us some time to get where we are now. Because I um, I reached out and I went to the military and I retired after two years. Um, two tours to Iraq. I don't think part would have allowed me. Um, we all get stuff in the world, but to know a person is to know a person. And I know this way, and I know that way, too bad. So I think this value of the change is there. Definitely. And for where it's sitting, it's been a role model to my children, so let them know that jail is not this to help them stay on the right path. It's to tell them his way of teaching them is to Tell him what he's going to do to get what he has to let him come in. I feel like he's going to talk to the umbrella. So, that's for me. I love I love this. And all I have for you is just to be out. Better citizen this time. And if you like to do it, I don't want to get it. We don't have a power, school, drug, none of that. I'll sit in that treatment class with you. I'll pay for it. Thank you. And thank you for your service, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Uh, my name is Ben Lee. I wish you could come home. I don't know how to make it. I just want to see you to cancel. I wish I had me in my life, show me the right way so that I can win. I can show him the right way to the role model to him, the role model to me. All right. <laughs> That's it. And then just evolve. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry for your loss of your mom. Okay. So, Damien, is anything you want to tell this panel before we vote? Yes, ma'am. Um, by the paperwork, by looking at it, I'm a bad guy, bad actor, drug addict. 
But deep down inside, man, I'm ready to, I'm ready to go home and be a father. I'm ready to go home and be a son. I'm ready to contribute to society as a whole. I can't sit and spit like uh, Mr. Rose said about manipulating and all that. If I'm given an opportunity to come home, I guarantee you, I guarantee you that I'm going to take advantage of this to be able to stay away from drugs with the counselor, to make sure that I go to work with nothing but the smoke. And when my mom was just talking right there, like it, it brought tears to my eyes because you asked me earlier, Mr. Rowe, you said one of my major triggers. And when I really thought about it, when me and my mom not on the same page, when me and my mother not talking, when, when I feel like she not being my friend, then I turn to run into the streets. I think, so. that's my biggest, that right there is my biggest trigger. And the way I feel like I can overcome that trigger is by going to this parenting, I mean, this family therapy, and us having a better relationship now because I know that if it's drugs in the picture, like my mom is not with that at all. I understand that. And I feel like I want that relationship to be there because I lost my father and everybody has taken a loss between 2020 and today, everybody. So, you know, but that's my, that was my biggest trigger. And if given a chance to come home, I'll take advantage of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I read both? Yes. Yeah, Mr. Owens, um, let me start out by saying, I never said you were a bad man and I don't believe you're a bad man. I think you're a drug addict. I think you've done some bad things as a result of the drugs. Uh, I, I wouldn't be asking you all of those questions if I didn't think that you were rehabilitating. Uh, I think you're on the right track. You've got a wonderful family that supports you. Uh, your mother is, is, is very honest and very aware of the problems. Uh, I, I, I think as a mother, she's believing that you're changed and she wants you to, 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 to change. And I think you're changing. I do. But I don't think you fully grasp the, the disease that you have in drug addiction. You're still at that denial stage. You believe you can do it all on your own, and you can't. You need long-term substance abuse treatment. Your mother is absolutely correct. I have seen everything that she said today. When I ran the drug court, 14 years, I went to 16 funerals. Because they thought they had it by the tail and they didn't need all the tools they learned. You slip up one time, you can't use the drugs you used to use when you've been sober for a long time. And the drugs are even worse now than they were when you were out. You go back and you go take a hit on something, you could be dead before you even know it. I don't want to see you get out to get back in. I want to see you get out to stay with this wonderful family that you have here. You've got a son that wants you home. You've got a fiance that wants you home. You've got a mother who loves you and wants you home. And I want to see you home with them, but to stay. Not to go back to using drugs or anything like that. I think you're on your way. I really do. But I think you need to look a little more and be a little more honest with yourself because drugs is not a choice. Drugs are a disease. And it's not something that you can take a pill for and get cured. You're going to be a drug addict and you're going to have this disease your entire life. And you're going to have to fight every day to stay sober. But once you get out with the tools to say sober and the love that you have with this family that's here, that should be enough to keep you out. But you need the tools. They can love you and want you to do right all they can. That won't change you unless you change. Based upon your disciplinary record, I mean, you got a write-up just three months, four months ago of fighting. 
Well, uh, you know, I'm not going to argue with you. Even if that one wasn't up, you had all these other ones. Okay. Uh, you have a long criminal history. You have a horrible supervision history. You have opposition from law enforcement. You are a high risk and you have high need, need, moderate needs, but high risk or substance abuse. My vote today is to recommend to you that you try to get into a long-term treatment program. Steve Hoyle, for example, they will help you look internally to see what the cause of the problem is and help you get the tools to be able to, to, to change that. I'm just one vote, but that's my vote. My vote is to deny you, and I want you to hear me. I don't believe you're a bad guy. I don't believe that you're not changing. You just haven't gotten it. And like I said, I want to see you get out, but I want to see you stay out. 41 years old is young. In, in the next year or so, you can come back before this board and be back on the street and get some good treatment. So, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Mr. Owens, good morning. Good morning, sir. I want to echo everything that Mr. Maribella had just said. <clears throat> but I want to be real with you. I want you to understand what you have ahead of you. You just had a write up in November of 2022. This board likes to see write up for you for 12, 18, 24 months before you come to the hearing. So you have at least 18, 24 months before I think you should reapply, saying that you have no write ups, that you had substance abuse treatment, that you've taken all the basic good time classes. For all the same reasons, I'm going to deny your request, but I will urge you, please stay right up free. Try to get into a substance abuse treatment program. Check with your classification officer, write DOC. Do your best to get into a program, take additional programs, and when you come up again in 18, 24 months, I think it'll be a different story. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, uh, uh Mr. Owens, uh, uh, Zion wrote a letter to us <clears throat> that I had the opportunity to read, and I just really appreciate that. He, he said that it's been a long, long time, and he have capital a long, long time. A lot of people that's, uh, since I've been on this board, uh, this is my second term, I've never seen somebody with as many opportunities as you have. You could have been an RN today in the healing business. Then you went to the reentry program. You could have had a trade. You could have been out in a trade by now. You've had opportunities. Even today, you have an excellent opportunity. And we know what you did with those opportunities because you're before a parole board today. And I just wanted to say that off the top. My vote is the same for the same reasons. And I do urge you to write and say that this parole board recommended you substance abuse treatment and reapply, don't you? So let's, we have one more there. Thank you, sir. It concludes our hearing. Your parole has been denied. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll send in one of the rest. Right. Oh, that.